Hey guys, Truth, because Jitsu here. We're going over triangle defenses today. So we had a previous video that I'll link in here that went over how to adjust a triangle, a, a few different methods, uh, various details to tighten something up when you're trying to apply it, as well as some options for uh, different chokes that are similar from the same position. But today, we're going to be focusing on defense because I feel like it's almost more important than knowing how to set up and apply a triangle is you're going to have to get out of them more often than you're going to have to adjust them, to be honest. So you should get a lot of use out of this video. We've got, I think, six different options in here to keep yourself safe and to escape a triangle. Uh, you don't have to throw them all into your repertoire, but I know that I have like two or three in there that I use very, very consistently with high percentage of escape, which is exactly what you need from this video. So I hope it helps. All right, so to cover a few different uh, basic fundamentals of the triangle position from a defensive standpoint is I need to be postured up as much as possible. The, the uh, antithesis of my objective here is to get crushed. He wants to break my posture. The more crushed I get, the easier it is for him to finish and the tighter all of his applications are going to be. So extending up is going to be a primary feature of trying to escape. Also, I need to always keep track of what's going on with this trapped arm. The one that's trapped inside the triangle, he's got options to drag it across, which is going to tighten my choke on my neck, but also he can switch to arm bars in a hurry. So I always have to keep that in mind, depending where I'm putting it, that he could switch, depending on what I'm doing, into an arm bar, which completely changes the game. So with those things in mind, the first thing I want to go over is what I call home base. And this is a position that if you can get to just to start your triangle defense, it's going to severely limit their application of the triangle and should uh, enhance your ability to escape it. It's a very, very easy thing to do. I'm going to keep my elbow as tight to his leg as possible, trying not to get a drug across. And I'm going to walk him forward and put my knees under his butt right here. Okay? It's as simple as that. If I keep his hips elevated right here, it keeps the knot of his triangle under stress and it's hard for him to mobilize his hips to start adjusting and catching angles. So I'm going to lock his hips down right here and I'll, you can hear I've got no problem with my voice. There's no uh, issue with, with chokes. If, if Elvin were to put this on where he's got a nice tight lock right here and I walk up and sit, Okay, I'm a lot safer here all of a sudden, and then I can start working on my escape. So home base is an extremely important part of getting out of a lot of triangles. Part of getting into a triangle from the attacker's point is passing one arm in, one arm out. And it usually ends up in what I call a diamond guard, where it's basically a closed guard behind your back before they can adjust it to that full-on triangle. They're just crossing their ankles at this point. And if you catch it at this point, you can walk him up into that home base position, Catch the hip right here on the pants and right here, and I'm going to extend backwards as I pull down in a jerking motion like this, which will break it like a guard break. And then I'm going either two arms in or two arms out immediately so I can get out of that triangle situation before he starts trying to reel me back in. So again, he's got diamond guard set up there, keeping my elbow tight. I'm going to walk him into home base, catch the pants here, break that open. And we've got our options for all sorts of passes from there. Alright, so now we're getting into triangles proper. He's got the triangle knotted up on the side. It's tight. My arm has not been drug across yet, which gives me a little bit of latitude to move. I'm, I'm making sure to really dig my elbow towards his hip over here. And this is what I'm going to do with this one. Oftentimes he's going to be grabbing a cross grip here, trying to drag it across, fighting that battle, which makes it easy for me to re-grip his own sleeve here, and that's going to be important, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to come up to my foot on the, the trapped arm side over here, and the objective is to connect this elbow to that knee, like this. And now I'm going to come, come up on my other foot. It's important that I have this grip, because if I didn't, he can underhook my leg, and it puts me out of position. It takes my, my knee away from my elbow. So I want to address that first. I'm going to preemptively make this grip, Come up, knee to elbow, other foot comes up. Now I want to turn this knee into the soft part of his belly in between his pelvis and his ribs, like this, which really drives and folds somebody in half at the spine and the torso. So again, I'm making sure my elbow's tight. Knee to elbow, I've got this grip. Come up, twist, and then we've got all of our escapes and passes from there. So this next one is similar to that last one, that is kind of twisting escape method. Um, 
I want to definitely make sure while I'm doing this to be careful of my arm. Because if I get stalled out halfway through, I'm kind of setting myself up for an armbar switch. So this one's called a corkscrew escape. I'm going to come forward, stacking my partner, putting my hand on this side of his head. <clears throat> I, I want to be actually against his head, not over here, because I want to make sure his body can't move in that direction. I'm, I'm causing a blockade. Now you can see how I'm extending my arm where it could be possible for him to swing over. So I want to try to <clears throat> keep my head down low like this. So if he were to try to swing his leg over, it's, it's hard to catch in front of my face. So I'm here, keeping low, and now all i got to do is try to get my foot to where my hand is, in this direction. And now straighten up, and it twists everything apart. It's extremely uncomfortable on the partner's spine. They're going to have to let go of that knot. So again, I haven't got my arm drug across yet, so I'm going to put it here, step over, and out we come. Don't want to hang out for too long with that hand on the ground. Alright, so here's one more option before they have that arm drug across, is I'm going to come up and try to grab the same side sleeve right here. If you can grab both, that's better, but at least the one on the same side of the trapped arm. I'm going to come up and put my foot in this armpit, and then sit back with my other leg beside me here. This already extends me in his triangle, which makes it hard to crush my posture, right? We were talking about being crushed is bad, being extended is good. So here I'm kind of extended already. And now I'm going to switch both of my feet onto his hips right here and extend completely. This one looks weird, but you've got to have it done to you to realize how good it is. So again, I want to catch this. Step, extend, flip, flip, extend. Alright, so every triangle that we've gone over so far involves me not having my arm drug across, but we've got to have an option for if it is. If he pulls that across, this is going to be a Hail Mary situation where you've got a couple of seconds, maybe three tops, to get out of this thing before things start going black. So I'm going to grab the leg right here with both hands, like so, and I want to jam this knee to the ground right here, coming up on my toes, sprawled out, so I'm heavy on my shoulder. And I basically try to keep this leg in place and drive my body past it, like so, breaking that knot, coming two arms in or two arms out. So one more time, he's got my arm all the way drug across, things are getting bad, I need to slam this knee to the ground, sprawl, and really put my pressure through that knot, coming all the way out. Once you can feel it slipping, that's your chance to, to break it completely and escape the position. So there you go, there's a good handful of options for you to get out of triangles. Try them out, see which one is your favorite. Um, like I said, there's lots of high percentage escapes here that should serve you very well all the way through from white to black belt. So if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Thanks for watching, subscribe to see the next one, and we'll see you then.